is talking about AI, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Specifically, we're going to talk about AI cloning. Why? Because I cloned myself. Why would I do that? Time. You see, 20 years ago, I found myself sitting in my doctor's office. And in my doctor's office, she called me in and asked me to bring in my family. And I brought in my mother and my father. I had gone through hours and hours and hours of testing, ultrasounds, x-rays, blood test after blood test. And now I was in the doctor's office to hear the results. My mom sat on one side, my dad sat on the other, and the room was so silent and cold. And then she looked up from her papers and she said, cancer, cancer. And the words just started bouncing off of the wall and rattling in my head. And I said, wait, I'm, I'm 26 years old. This isn't part of my life plan. Cancer? And my dad grabbed my hand so hard it hurt. It hurt almost as much as the words that she was saying. And then my dad, he, with the tears flowing, wiped the tears from his face, looked up just enough to look at the doctor, and he asked her the question, what are my daughter's chances? And I started yelling, no, no, I don't want to hear them. I do not want to hear them. Don't talk about it. Why did you ask that, dad? But no one could hear me. The yelling was on the inside. And no matter how hard I tried to yell, the words just wouldn't come out. She didn't say anything, and my dad asked her one more time with shaking in his voice, what are my daughter's chances? And the doctor said her chances of surviving five years is 39.7%. I thought to myself, not even 40%, 39.7%. That means that I had a over 60% chance of not surviving the next five years. And then my doctor began to discuss the fact that I had to get into emergency surgery because the tumor was the size of, of a deflated football surrounding my ovary. And I had test and test to go through for the next six days. And as I remembered what she said, the countdown in my head had started. Time, which I didn't worry about that much at 26, was now my relentless enemy. I had a countdown on my life, and I started to think about where was I spending my time? What did I spend my time on in the past that wasn't valuable? What am I going to do with the countdown timer that has now been put on my life? And as I continued to think about it, I thought about the fact that, you know what? Time now became my single obsession. And I thought to myself, I have to pay attention to where I'm spending every minute of my life. It became my obsession. And at that point, I was a business owner. I'd been a business owner for a few years. And I started to think about all the places that I was spending my time doing these mundane tasks that really weren't worth it. So I started learning about outsourcing. And I started leveraging other people to get tasks done, other people's time. I started using other people's time to get the things done that didn't have value in my life, that didn't provide value, so I could spend more time with my family, right? In fact, I got so good at it, I became known in the industry as a master of outsourcing. And then along comes AI and the AI technology. And as I'm looking at AI, I'm saying, how can I leverage AI to reclaim my time, to bend time, to get more out of the time that I have here every day? I thought about that. And so as I dug into AI, I thought to myself, okay, how am I going to use AI and leverage it, take advantage of it, the opportunities that are in front of us right now with AI, how am I going to use AI? And I know some of you might be thinking, AI cloning, isn't this just another way, Alicia, that AI is going to impersonate us? And to that I say maybe, but let's explore it together. So I went to ChatGPT, owned by OpenAI, my favorite AI tool, and I went to ChatGPT and I said, how can I use this tool to clone myself so that those tasks that I don't want to do and that I can't outsource, AI can do it for me. So in this process of understanding AI, I said to ChatGPT, 
I would like for you to write as me in my style and in my tone of voice. And then I told it, I will give you my bio and transcripts from my presentation so that you will understand how to write like me and talk like me. And do not write anything until I have given you all of the information. Do you understand? And to that, ChatGPT replied, yes, I understand. Please provide me with your bio and transcript and let me know when you've given me all the necessary information. I was like, oh, I'm on to something here. I love it. And then I asked ChatGPT, based on what I've given you, what is my style? What is my style of talking and teaching? And ChatGPT said, based on the transcripts you've provided, your writing and teaching style can be described as energetic, engaging, and conversational. You have a knack for addressing your audience directly, using phrases like, hey, it's Alicia, and let me show you. Your tone is friendly and approachable, making the content relatable and easy to follow. You demonstrate enthusiasm for the tools and the technique you present, often using phrases like amazing takeaway, incredible Chrome extension, and fantastic feature. It went on to say, this enthusiasm helps you to captivate your audience and keep them engaged throughout your training. Additionally, you incorporate storytelling elements, sharing personal experiences, and demonstrating how you've applied the concepts or tools in real life situations. This approach allows your audience to connect with you on a more personal level and understand the practical applications of the knowledge that you share. Overall, right? this is how it concludes it. Overall, your writing and teaching style exude confidence, expertise, and a genuine desire to help others. I'm thinking to myself, what? <gasps> this AI got me better than I got myself. <laughs> I loved the output that came out. And so now I'm thinking to myself, I've done it. I've cloned myself. This tool understands who I am, my writing and teaching style better than I do. This is amazing. So I put it to the test to write a blog post. So the first blog post for my website um, that I wanted it to write, I inputted what I wanted it to write about. I reminded it to write in my tone and style as me, for me, and it did it. In fact, it pushed it out in less than 60 seconds a task that would normally take me two hours to do, now took 60 seconds. I felt like a magician, like this is amazing, this is great. And then I looked at the content and I read the content and I asked myself the question, is this really me, is this my content? Is this really me? And after I finished reading it, I said, this is me, this is exactly what I would say, how I would say it, yes, I've done it. I've cloned myself. And as I calculated the time that I saved, it takes me, human Alicia, one hour to write a blog post. But AI Alicia, the writer, can do 24 blog posts, including rewrites and additions, in the same amount of time it takes me to do one. And I'm thinking to myself, this is amazing. What should I do with all this extra time now? What would you do with the extra time? What would you do with the extra time? And I said, well, here's something I've always wanted to do, start a podcast. So I started my podcast, and I used AI Alicia, the writer who's mastered AI, to write the podcast episodes. And then I got on the mic, and I read the episodes. But the editing process and the process to do that was taking up a lot of time. And I thought to myself, I'm not trying to get into another task to consume my time. So why don't I create AI Alicia, the voice? I've got the writer. What if I could create the voice to save me time? So I went to a tool called Eleven Labs. And in Eleven Labs, I uploaded audios of myself that I specifically recorded to get a clone of my voice. It did it. Three audios that I uploaded. It was able to clone my voice. And now I'm thinking to myself, I have a writing clone. I have a voice clone. So I recorded the podcast. And so this was podcast episode number six. Now, when my sister listened to this podcast episode, she complimented me on the clarity of the episode, the great message, the enthusiasm in my voice. And I want to mention, she never complimented me on the first five episodes, right? And then my fiance, Greg, as Greg listened to it, he sent me a message and he said, oh, I really liked the last podcast episode. You did really good, baby. You did really good. I'm thinking to myself, 
If my sister and my fiance cannot tell the difference between my AI voice and human Alicia voice, I'm onto something here. I'm onto something, right? Thinking about the time saving. I've cloned myself. And as I went and I said, you know what? Let me go look at the insights on my podcast and these episodes. And I looked at the insights on this one episodes, the analytics and the data as compared to my other episodes. And the AI voice had more downloads and more through plays than the real me. And now I'm thinking to myself, what in the world? I'm so jealous of my AI now. I'm jealous. <laughs> she is better than me. She writes faster than me. Her voice is more charismatic than mine. What am I going to do? And it's at this point that I'm like, should I be happy for myself or not? Right? Should I be happy for myself? But I thought for a second, you know what? I'm not always in the mood to do writing, to write an episode for my podcast or my blog. Definitely don't always feel like getting on the microphone to record. So I said, let me test AI Alicia, the writer, and ask her if she is in the mood to do some more writing for me. So I said, are you in the mood to write another blog post for me, a podcast episode, and an article? And here's what she replies back. As an AI, I don't have emotions or moods, so I don't have preferences or moods for completing tasks. However, I am always ready and available to assist you with any content you need. Just let me know how I can help, and I will provide you with the support you require. No moods? Now she is better than me. She has no moods. I can type in anything that I want with AI Alicia, and she will get it done. Listen, AI Alicia, the clone, she never is tired, no fatigue. She doesn't have frustration. There are never any excuses. She is never too busy. She said she was always available, right? doesn't even ask for vacation days, of which I ask plenty of myself. And so I'm thinking, this is amazing. AI cloning. Would you do it? Would you clone yourself? If you could save time, if you could create amazing content, if you could make a bigger impact on the world by getting those things done that you've always thought about but never had the time to do it before, would you do it? Would you do it? Would you write that book? Would you write more blog articles? Would you start your podcast, right? Would you get your message out into the world and put out more content than you ever thought possible? That's the question. Would you do it? Because at the end of the day, it's about us. It's about us. It's about our lives. It's about our dreams. It's about our stories and how we can impact others and make a difference. And if your AI clone can help you get there, faster, more efficiently, be careful, you might be jealous of your clone, but as it can help you get there, the question is, would you do it? Because now you'll have the time to do the things that take the human interaction, right? Spending time with your family, doing the things that you love to do. I love to go fishing, spending more time on the water. Now you have the time to do those things, those things that make us uniquely human. So what have I done with my extra time? I spend a lot of time in a hammock, <laughs> right. doing nothing while AI Alicia is working and pumping out content or voice recording for me. And you know, one thing about the ovarian cancer that I had is that it robbed me of the opportunity to have children. I couldn't have children. Something that I'd always dreamed about, that was my life's plan, to have two kids, and I, and, and I couldn't have children. But two and a half years ago, I met my fiance, Greg, and his beautiful daughter, Malia. And I might not have, able, have been able to be a birth mother, but I am a mom. And it gives me so much joy. So much joy. So while AI Alicia is working hard, I'm doing crafts with Malia. We're playing outside and having the time of our life, right? Having the time of our life. And then I wanted a puppy. <laughs> so now I have time for a puppy. And this is a real puppy, not an AI dog. This is a real puppy. <laughs> And his name is Bruno. His name is Bruno. But we don't talk about Bruno, so I'll go to the next slide. <laughs> and in 10 days from now, it will mark exactly 20 years when a doctor put a countdown on my life. I am cancer-free. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I am so involved in helping other people to see how technology can help them to make the biggest impact and to live their best life, to live their best life. And we have to remember as we use AI and as we dig into it and as we look at all the opportunities and advantages that AI provides for us, we have to also remember the human element. We have to remember to be ethically responsible in what we do with AI as we all step into it and as we all master AI. There's so much of a human element that's still involved in it. AI can do so much for us, but we are still uniquely ourselves and we are still uniquely needed in our voice and our impact that we make. Let's let AI help us to really extend our reach and to really extend that impact. AI is technology. It's technology that's right here in our hands for us to leverage, take advantage of. So many opportunities for all of us as we step into this wonderful world of discovering what technology can do for us and for our lives. We will use the technology responsibly and we will use it to enhance our lives. Because AI isn't here to replace us. It's not here to replace us. My AI clones cannot replace me, but they can enhance my life. They can help me to do those things in life that I want to do, that are my human element. In a life with finite time, there are infinite possibilities ahead of us. And I invite all of us to explore those possibilities together. And I ask you the question one more time. If you could create an AI clone that could help you, would you do it? 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 Yes, would you do it? 